after 14 years of trial and error, trying to get the perfect contrast and chatoyance on my blades, I've finally found what I'm looking for. Let's do it. I am trying to get all the grease and oils and stuff off this blade that I've got sanded to a thousand grit and I'm gonna etch it. It's been about a month since I looked at the initial pattern and it was just a brief crude rough etch uh, on the initial billet. So I don't actually really know what this pattern looks like and I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like. Hopefully it'll etch okay. I've been working on the whole knife. Like sometimes the blade, sometimes the handle for like a month and a couple days probably. I don't know, I really don't know. <laughs> A long time. Yeah. Everything has a purpose. A little stick there to hold my clamp. Uh, barely deep enough, but it should be good. I might lower it a little bit, just as long as the whole blade and ricopso are submerged. And I'll wait a couple seconds and take a look at the pattern for the first time in a month and see if it's what I remember it was. And I've never seen it on a, something finished, sanded and everything like this. I have high hopes for it because it should be cool. Two minutes later. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Oh man, I kind of forgot that I made it a little bit more of a bold pattern. Oh wow. That is crazy. Crazy. Crazy for feeling so Wow. It's a looking up pretty, pretty, pretty good. Might possibly have a spot or two that's not etching how I want, but I'm not sure. A little early on. Blade sanded to 1000 grit, so now I'm gonna, every few minutes I'll clean off the oxides from the acid, and I'll do that with 1500 grit for a couple of cycles. And then I will do the last couple cycles with 2500 grit. You don't really, you can go straight to 25 from the 1000 grit, but I find this just helps make that transition a little bit smoother. Just, just a tiny bit, at least it does in my mind. Maybe it does nothing in person, I don't know, or in, in reality. Wow, this thing is a little bit long and a little bit hard to hold out here. I think after the next cycle, I'll probably neutralize it in between the next few cycles and take it out in the shop and full blown put it on my sanding board and clean off the oxides that way just because it's so long and hard to hold on to and stuff make the whole process take longer but I want to make sure to do this part well see this is kind of the part you gotta <laughs> mount it on the board for it's kind of hard to uh, hold it and clean out this fuller Okay, 0.5 minutes later. <laughs> Clean her off again. I'm gonna get the big stuff here and then I'll take it out and do the rest on the board. It's a lot easier to get this fuller sanded really well. And while I'm out here, I'm gonna go ahead and sand all the, all the bevels and everything extra hard. I don't think I've ever really done that before in between etches, but I kind of feel like it might increase the overall look of the uh, Damascus possibly. This may be uh, an accidental discovery, something great, and something that takes more time, of course, because what what that's great doesn't take more time. Yeah, I got a good feeling about, about this process of sanding it out here on the board. Can't wait to see what this blade looks like when it's finished up here in a couple hours.
Something that I want to note about taking it out and sanding it in between the etching, I think it may end up making the Damascus really nice, possibly even nicer than what I normally do. And this may be a regular thing. I will have you note though that I was using Windex with ammonia on it uh, out there and that helps neutralize the acid and stuff while I was doing that sanding because normally I'm only sanding the oxides off for a minute or two, but out there I had it out there for 10 or 15 minutes and you definitely wanna make sure the, uh, the acid's getting neutralized at least a little bit because if it was out there for 10 or 15 minutes without being neutralized at all, then uh, the acid that's still remaining on the blade could be like slowly etching it deeper and doing funny things. I've got the blade etched and now it's in some uh, baking soda, water, neutralizing. And then I'm gonna buff it and darken the blade. I rinsed the water off this. Now I'm gonna go over to the buffer named Warren and buff it. I am trying to coffee darken this dagger now. So far it's coming out kind of yellow. And I'm not sure how even it's darkening, but it's early on in the process still. Might need to uh, let the heat, let it cool down a little bit more. Seems to really help if it's turning too yellow. I etched the tang pretty quick. You can already see the pattern on the tang. It's looking good. So I'm finally not getting that yellow that I was getting. It's a little lower temperature now. I'm gonna put it back in there a little longer. A few moments later. Whoa. Oh man. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's a look kind of good. Go a little longer until I ruin it and have to start over. I'm not seeing any yellow on it though, so I think I think it's low enough temperature that it should be okay. So for future reference, you might want to start doing this with uh, about a hundred degree coffee. That's where it started not leaving yellow on the blade. Hey, you wanna hear kind of a bad but cool rhyme from YouTube <laughs> song? Do you want it to do on YouTube? Don't put it on YouTube. <laughs> I got done coffee darkening the uh, blade and I love the way it came out, except it's got a tiny hint of yellow and I can't get rid of it and I feel like I might be able to get a little bit darker so I mixed up a brand new fresh batch of coffee, which I probably should have done in the first place because I'm etching a super expensive knife and I was using some coffee mix that dad had already used once or twice. So I got a brand new fresh, fresh batch and uh, I'm gonna try it again because I know I can get it to look as, at least as good as it is already, but I think I can get it to look even better. So I gotta steel wool the blade. All right, everybody, it's the next day. I have a beautiful, beautiful finish on this knife now. So what I ended up doing that you didn't see, it seemed like the lower the heat got with the coffee, the less yellow there was. So I just decided to leave it in room temperature coffee overnight. And it came out amazing. I buffed it a bunch before doing that as well and got it super chatoyant and shiny. And then I just left it in the coffee overnight and it left it super shiny super chatoyant, it just dances around in the light, and it got it really nice and dark on the uh, 1084 bits. So it is like, it is one of the very best etches I've ever seen before. And I'm not just saying that lightly, because I, I just love the way it looks, and I think we're gonna have a new system down for um, getting the look I want on my knives. I've been trying to get this look for 14 years, the ultimate chatoyance and shine to the blade with the ultimate contrast. And this is the best result I've ever had. In the years past, you either get chatoyance or you get contrast. It's really hard to get both, but I've been trying to get this, this kind of result for 14 years. Ever since I made Damascus, in the very beginning, I've been trying to make it look contrasty and super shiny. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you've ever given yourself a paper cut, then subscribe. Let me know what you think of the blade, the final result down in the comments. And if you liked the video, then leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.